So today I'm going to give you a tour of my Portage and Main LCB 300 boiler, showing how I heat my house for cheap. Uh, so to get things started, this is the building I have the stove in, the boiler, and that's the uh, hopper bin that I keep my, my screenings and stuff or fuel in. This is my 110 year old house. Uh, totals about 3,000 square feet, all three floors, plus an 1,100 square foot garage. And in the back there, you can see a 50 by 60 shop, and it's all heated by this boiler. Um, so let's go into the boiler room and see what it looks like. Pardon the mess I have in here. It's a uh, constant work in progress, I guess. One day I'd like to have it all perfectly clean. So this giant bag is what I'm burning. Right now I'm burning rye screenings. Looks like that. Kind of dusty. Um, I just brought this bag in here to when I burned its stuff as a sample just to see how it would work, but it turns out it works great. So let's get into the boiler part of it. So this is the boiler. It's vented out the top. And I have one pump here. This pump just pumps in a circle um, from the return of the boiler, from the supply of the boiler to the return. And then it goes out of these pipes through this pump here, just through that one inch line. And that goes to the house and from the house, it goes to the shop. Uh, so that's pretty simple plumbing as far as that goes. The unit itself is, is the boiler obviously. And this is the feeding system. I think this one was custom built for me, but um, I think there's all sorts of different options available. Tie it right to your hopper bin or whatever you want. Special bins are made for it as well. The way the feed works for me is, I don't know if you can see it in there, not really. There's a proximity switch. So it's all automated. I don't have to do anything. Um, when the screenings in that hopper bin get low, the boiler tur or sorry, not the boiler. The, um, the motor up on the top there turns on and just fills this hopper till it's full again. And then when the boiler is calling, it feeds through this auger here. And this is a little fire break, really nice safety to have. And the boiler is actually running right now. So if we open it, you can see exactly what's going on here. It just turns really slow. If you open it, it breaks the air seal so some smoke comes out. But turns really slow, works really well. And this is the boi the back of the boiler, or the front, I'm not sure what you want to call it. Uh, good looking unit, mine's a little bit dirty, again, just because I'm whatever. It's a little bit of a work in progress. So up top here is the heat exchanger. There's not a whole lot to see in here. I'll see if I can do it with one hand. And you can just pull out any of those tubes real easy anytime and just clean it out. I do that about once a month or so. Makes a bit of a mess in the ground, but I just, uh, just trying to close this here. I just make a mess in the ground and then I sweep it away. It's pretty simple. And so the boiler's running right now. You'll see what the fire looks like. It's roaring pretty good. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Uh, must have just started, that fire gets a bit bigger. Um, but she easily heats my 7,000 square feet, no problem. So that part's great. The control panel's in here. Uh, it's gonna keep running until it gets to 170, and then it'll shut off. I have a five degree differential set. So once the boiler's in idle mode and it drops back down to 165, it automatically turns on. I can manually control my panel. Uh, the grate, the ash auger if I want. I'll just open this up real quick, give you a sample of the controls. So there's a variety of VFDs. You can control the speed of your auger and your fans and your grate and your ash auger, uh, a couple timers. And you need to adjust these things depending on what you're burning. So I've burned sunflower screenings, I've burned coal. Right now the screenings I'm burning are from rye. Um, and it's been really great. So that's kind of the, the summary of what the boiler looks like. Now I'll just go outside and show you how the ashes work. They're not going to be running right now. But if I go to the back of my building, 
just walk through the snow. So I've dug myself a little bit of a loading ramp kind of to allow more ashes before I have to move it out of here. But this is what it looks like here. So that's where my ashes come out and they just pour onto the floor here. It turns on twice a day for about 15 seconds. It doesn't ash a whole lot. It depends on the fuel that you're burning. And that's been working. Oh, almost fell. That's been working really well. I've burnt, uh, so the deal with this is I used to burn coal and when I bought this property, it would cost about four or $5,000 a year, which isn't bad for 7,000 square feet. But as the carbon tax came in, it uh, really started messing with the prices of it all. So what's happened is uh, the four or $5,000 worth of coal now cost $10,000 plus. Uh, so I started burning sunflower screenings in my coal boiler, which didn't work very well. So I picked up this boiler from Portage in Maine and it's been awesome. So I burned the remainder of my coal that I had and that burned no problem. It actually burned really, really well in there. And then I uh, started burning sunflower screenings, which are really cheap, about 40 bucks a ton, uh, sometimes 20 bucks a ton, depending on time of year you buy them. And that's been uh, really good. Cut my coal or cut my heating bill down to about maybe 2,000 bucks with transportation. And now I'm burning rye, um, this stuff here that I showed you earlier. And this stuff I actually get for free. So I'm gonna get it by the B train. Um, as many as tons as I can get at a time. So my $10,000 heating bill is now $0 effect effectively. A little bit of power to run the boiler and a couple pumps, but uh, I'm saving $10,000 a year with this unit. So it's been, uh, it's been really, really great. This is the first year it's been running and it's doing an excellent job. Hope this helps. Bye for now.